Hey guys, Spartan here from SpartanTrain.com. Want to hit you guys with a quick little trade review from today. Uh, today's actually September 23rd, 2020. This will probably be posted tomorrow. But uh, anyways, want to talk about this little SPI, uh, not little, but I guess kind of big uh, trade that happened today. So I traded this in another platform the entire day and then I was like, okay, it's starting to push. I was watching on the L2, it's guy in the room, whatever. I figured, okay, I'll scalp the trade. Um, the scalp turned into a pretty big trade actually. Um, so I want to talk about that in general so kind of what i was looking at i wish i recorded the l2 while it was happening because this was mainly l2 based but there's some prime things that you can look at in the uh short term on the actual chart itself to give you an indication when something's going to be pushing most of the uh, most of the time it's gonna be volume based if you look at very short time frames like a one minute chart you can see flags forming um, i don't use the one minute chart i only day trade off a 10 minute chart uh, after a while, you kind of just get used to understanding like, oh, there's probably a flag forming at this point because you can kind of see how the price action's working within the candle. But anywho, let's kind of take a look at this trade. Um, so, you know, this trade basically, let's see, it was a, uh, I'll show you the, you know, all the uh, executions, whatever. It's one of those positions that, um, I can tell I added some LTRP today. Anyways, but it's one of those uh, positions, guys, that I'm looking at taking a starter position adding into the starter position and then trading around a core the entire time. When I scalp trade, I tend to go bigger size um, because I want to be in and out, you know, uh, something like this. I'm looking to make it two, three points at first. And then obviously when it started to explode to the upside, I'm looking to make, um, you know, five, six, seven points. And I'm reducing my size as it gets more range, more and more and more. Now this instance today, obviously, you know, it ended up being almost like a 20 point trade. I think it was like 17 bucks from start to finish, something like that. Um, but anywho, basically what I was looking at, so this thing started to push up. Um, I had a whole bunch of fibs set up on the chart. That's a different video in itself to show you guys how to set fibs up. Uh, but anyways, I had a whole bunch of fib extensions set up. It started to push to the upside. I was staring at the L2 on this position. Um, as it started to push, I decided, okay, I'm going to scalp the position as it breaks the highs, broke the highs, added into the position. I'm um, at 22.79 uh, and then I added a whole bunch at 23.22 when I saw more volume coming in on the L2. As it pushed up, um, what I was looking at was resistance into my Fibonacci levels as well as weakness on the L2. So I was looking at sellers coming in. When I saw sellers come in on the L2, a couple minutes later, I was selling to the pop 25, 25, 35, 25, 60, 26, 09. So, you know, a couple points, three points there, whatever that is. But what I'm doing is I'm not selling the entire position. I'm selling, you know, maybe one half to one quarter. Um, sorry, one half to three quarters. And then if I see continuation on the name, I'll add back into the position. So I always want to keep that core on. And what that core position does is it allows you to have a, um, a little bit of cushion. Now, from a straight logical standpoint, yeah, you could enter and exit the trade as it pushes up, sure. But it's a lot easier from a mental and psychological standpoint, which is what primarily the biggest battle in trading is. It's all mental and psychological. Um, to have you know that cushion as a uh, you know safety net, just in case something starts to pull back on you or this name starts to pull back on you, your average is going to be much lower because of that. So, anyway, so anyways, stock stock started to push up, sold some into the uh, pops. So obviously, you can see the little pullback right after that occurred. So I'm just watching the L2. Sellers come in. I'm going to sell into it. Um, after the seller came in, after there was a little bit of sellers coming in, uh, it started to get bought back up right away. I bought into on it. I bought it into that push back through the highs. So a range break to the upside. I was, I had about 29 and 70, and then I had room towards 32, uh, 45. And then I think it was 35 or 36 on the upside. So basically I was adding into the push. What I tend to try to do is when I start to see, um, volume coming in and I start to see, a lot of momentum in a stock. Most people, I guess, human nature would be to kind of start taking things off. That's when you want to start leaning into it if the risk reward is skewed in your favor. In this case, risk reward was skewed in my favor. I wanted to lean into it because it had more room to the upside. And then that's what I was doing. As it broke through the 2970 level, I actually didn't sell any into it. I was adding into the position there. Um, I started to see, I added a little bit more at 32.19 um, and I started to see a seller come in there. So I started to just take it off around 33.37, taking off more at 32.39 as it pulled back to where I added some of that position. It, it ended up you know, breaking through that high as it did. I added into that position there, 37.52. And then what I started to see on the daily chart or the intraday chart was it starting to get extended. Funny thing about this SPI is it typically, you know, these types of names, they will get a, um, a volatility halt 
as they're running to the upside because it's making such a large percentage move in such a short period of time. But this one wasn't really halting, so I figured there was gonna be a halt coming up soon. And if you guys are unaware of how to kind of spot a halt on the L2, what you start to see is the bid and ask tighten up completely. Um, they'll almost be the exact same or very close to the exact same. And you see a ton of orders going in and out at that area. Halt's gonna come pretty much 10 seconds after that, something like that. Uh, anyways, so what happened was um, I started to see that happening. Um, I was selling into the, you know, the move to the upside here and then I added one more time and when I started to see the bid and ask really tighten up, I told the room too, I said, you know, I'm going to take the rest of this position off. I think that's going to halt. I sold the rest at the $41. I said, okay, I'm done with it. It was extended to the upside. It did halt. Uh, I think that at that moment, like right after 159. Yeah. And then it opened up. Yeah. 204. So it halted literally right after I sold. And then obviously you see that the volatility that popped and then it came, you know, came back down, came in. Um, you know, I didn't participate in the short by any means or um, any of the trading after that. I just left it for the rest of the day because I didn't want to, you know, overstay my welcome on something that, you know, gave me a nice position. I literally traded, I think, seven times or eight times today. I would count this as one trade. And then, you know, I was trading it literally on all these little flag breaks in another account uh, throughout the day. But anywho, I wanted to just talk about kind of momentum trading, um, kind of recognizing when the halt's going to be occurring. Good example of, uh, you know, kind of what's going on here. Again, I'm trading off a 10 minute chart. So what I'm just looking at is price action breaking back through the highs to add into the position as long as it has more room to my risk level to the upside, which I was using Fibonacci extensions to give me myself my levels. And if you follow me on Twitter, I was giving the levels um, pretty much the entire move. So maybe that can help you there. But anyways, that's it for today, guys. Just a quick little review there. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to go to SpartanTrading.com. 